Previously on Schoology Fun. Let's go! Gross. No, seriously, what did we do? Alright, nice to be. Um, so, a uh, quick recap of what happened with week three. is the, There was a lot of discussion about the history of science and then getting into stellar evolution and everything along those lines. And you're like, okay, cool, I can rewatch that video. That's not really what I want to get into. I want to focus on um, the one big take takeaway from last week, and it's the idea of what does the atom actually look like. And so our perspective of what the atom should actually be right now is that we should see that there are protons and neutrons sitting inside of something called the nucleus. And on the outside of those are things called electrons. Now, things we should know. Um, protons are positive. They're roughly one atomic mass unit. Neutrons are neutral. They're roughly one atomic mass unit. And electrons are negative, and they're roughly one one thousandth, and that's actually kind of bad. It's really even smaller than that atomic mass unit. So really, they have like no mass. Now, how do we get there? That was a long process. You start way, way, way long ago, and you say something like, okay, antiquity talks about this idea of an atom, Democritus, everything along the way. John Dalton brings it into the Industrial Revolution. Great. And then the first thing we go into is the idea of, hey, you know what? I got these electrons hanging out inside of this sphere. How'd they figure that out? Well, that's Thomson's cathode ray, which if we were in class, we'd spend more time looking at what a cathode ray really does. Truthfully, we just find out there's negatives in there. Well, how are they hanging out in there? I don't know, some sort of positive goo. And so we have positive goo sort of holding it in place, like a watermelon. Rutherford Thomson's student says, you know what? There's not positive goo because when I shoot positive things at it, it flies straight through them, except for when it bounces off every once in a while, which makes no sense unless all the positivity is sitting in one spot. Therefore, the electrons must be doing what the planets are doing. Okay, Bohr goes a step further and starts looking at spectral lines. Well, if you have orbits like this, they're not going to fall down. So Bohr says, let's say there's a nucleus, but there's actually these defined orbit pathways. So when electrons jump down, they can release light, which we see as spectral lines, which if you notice, that's kind of how I drew it over here. One tiny detail. Yes, we go to the quantum model and we say, hey, this actually can't happen. And so really what do we have? We have some like sort of orbit that's out there in probability land and we have some positive in the center. But skipping over Schrodinger and Heisenberg and certainty principle and everything along the lines there, we get to this by really the discovery of the neutron. And the discovery of the neutron came from James Chadwick well, it came from a couple people, but James Chadwick kind of gets the credit for it. And we find out that inside the nucleus, we have some things that have no charge, but have the mass of a proton. And that's a little bit weird. So as we dive into this week, we're going to basically pretend like this is the Bohr model of an atom. And I'm going to say air quotes on that because Bohr never talked about a neutron. And to be honest with you, electrons are not doing that. But it's a really easy way to kind of keep track of electrons. So as we walk into this week, our visualization of the atom is that we have protons and neutrons in the center. Protons and neutrons are both really heavy. Electrons are somewhere on the outside, and they're really light. Protons are positive, electrons are negative, neutrons are neutral. And if you got that figured out, and the way we got there, you're in good shape for this week.